पेज नंबर सिक्सटी थ्री लेसन नंबर फाइव द हंड्रेड ड्रेसेस पार्ट वन द राइटर इज एल बसोर एस्तर बिफोर यू रीड हाउ डू वी जज द पीपल अराउंड अस बाय देयर मनी वेल्थ एंड पोजीशंस और इज देयर समथिंग ऑफ मोर एंजॉयिंग वैल्यू टू लुक फॉर इन अ पर्सन पॉइंट नंबर टू This story is a sensitive account of how a poor young girl is judged by her classmates. Wanda Petronski is a young Polish girl who goes to school with other American children in an American town. These other children see Wanda as different in many ways. Can you guess how they treat her? Next point. read the information in the box given hereafter find out more about this community or about a related topic from an encyclopedia or the internet now the box the polish american community in the united states the first polish immigrants arrived in america in 1608 but the largest wave of polish immigration occurred in the early 20th century when more than 1 million poles migrated to the united states the polish state did not exist at that time and the immigrants were identified according to their country of origin rather than to ethnicity they were identified as russian poles german poles and austrian poles One of the most notable Polish American communities is in Chicago and its suburbs. So Chicago is sometimes called the second largest Polish city in the world, next only to Warsaw, the capital of Poland. Polish Americans were sometimes discriminated against in the United States as were the Irish, Italians and Jews. According to the United States 2000 census 667414 Americans of age 5 years and older reported Polish as the language spoken at home which is about 1.4% of the people who speak languages other than English or 0.25% of the US population page number 64 Today Monday Wanda Petronski was not in her seat but nobody not even Peggy and Madeline the girls who started all the fun noticed her absence usually Wanda sat in the seat next to the last seat in the last row in room 13 she sat in the corner of the room where the rough boys who did not make good marks sat the corner of the room where there was most scuffling of feet most roars of laughter when anything funny was said and most mud and dirt on the floor wanda did not sit there because she was rough and noisy on the contrary she was very quiet and rarely said anything at all and nobody had ever heard her laugh out loud Sometimes she twisted her mouth into a crooked sort of smile but that was all nobody knew exactly why vanda sat in that seat unless it was because she came all the way from bogens heights and her feet were usually caked with dry mud but no one really thought much about vanda petronski once she sat in the corner of the room the time when they thought about vanda was outside the school hours at noon time when they were coming back to school or in the morning early before school began when groups of 2 or 3 or even more would be talking and laughing on their way to the school yard then sometimes they waited for vanda to have fun with her the next day tuesday vanda was not in school either and nobody noticed her absence again but on wednesday peggy and maddy who sat down front with other children who got good marks and who didn't track 
in a whole lot of mud. Did notice that Vanda wasn't there. Peggy was the most popular girl in school. She was pretty. She had many pretty clothes and her hair was curly. Maddie was her closest friend. The reason Peggy and Maddie noticed Vanda's absence was because Vanda had made them late to school. Page 65 They had waited and waited for Vanda to have some fun with her and she just hadn't come. They often waited for Vanda Petronsky to have fun with her. Oral Comprehension Check Number 1. Where in the classroom does Vanda sit and why? Number 2. Where does Vanda live? What kind of a place do you think it is? Number 3. When and why do Peggy and Maddie notice Vanda's absence? Number 4. What do you think to have fun with her means? Vanda Petronsky Most of the children in room 13 didn't have names like that. They had names easy to say like Thomas, Smith or Alan. There was one boy named Bounds, Willie Bounds, and people thought that was funny, but not funny in the same way that Petronsky was. Vanda didn't have any friends. She came to school alone and went home alone. She always wore a faded blue dress that didn't hang right. It was clean, but it looked as though it had never been ironed properly. She didn't have any friends, but a lot of girls talked to her. Sometimes they surrounded her in the schoolyard as she stood watching the little girls play hopscotch on the worn hard ground. Vanda, Peggy would say in a most courteous manner as though she were talking to Miss Mason. Vanda, she would say, giving one of her friends a nudge. Tell us, how many dresses did you say you had hanging up in your closet? Page number 66 A hundred, Vanda would say. A hundred, exclaimed all the little girls incredulously, and the little ones would stop playing hopscotch and listen. Yeah, a hundred, all lined up, said Vanda. Then her thin lips drew together in silence. What are they like? All silk, I bet, said Peggy. Yeah, all silk, all colours. Velvet too? Yeah, velvet too. A hundred dresses, Vanda would repeat stolidly. All lined up in my closet. Then they would let her go. And then before she had gone very far, they couldn't help bursting into shrieks and peals of laughter. A hundred dresses. Obviously, the only dress Vanda had was the blue one she wore every day. So, why did she say she had a hundred? What a story. How many shoes did you say you had? Sixty pairs, all lined up in my closet. Cries of exaggerated politeness greeted this. All alike? Oh no, every pair is different. All colours, all lined up. Peggy, who had thought up this game, and Maddie, her inseparable friend, were always the last to leave. Finally, Vanda would move up the street, her eyes dull and her mouth closed, hitching her left shoulder every now and then, in the funny way she had, finishing the walk to school alone. Peggy was not really cruel. She protected small children from bullies. And she cried for hours if she saw an animal mistreated. If anybody had said to her, Don't you think that is a cruel way to treat Vanda? She would have been very surprised. Cruel? Why did the girl say she had a hundred dresses? Anybody could tell that that was a lie. Why did she want to lie? And she wasn't just an ordinary person. Else, why did she have a name like that? Anyway, 
they never made her cry. As for Maddie, this business of asking Vanda every day how many dresses and how many hats and how many this and that she had was bothering her. Page number 67. Maddie was poor herself. She usually wore somebody's hand-me-down clothes. Thank goodness she didn't live up on Boggins Heights or have a funny name. Sometimes when Peggy was asking Vanda those questions in that mocking polite voice, Maddie felt embarrassed and studied the marbles in the palm of her hand, rolling them around and saying nothing herself. Not that she felt sorry for Vanda exactly. She would never have paid any attention to Vanda if Peggy hadn't invented the dresses game. But suppose Peggy and all the others started in on her next. She wasn't as poor as Vanda. Perhaps, but she was poor. Of course, she would have more sense than to say she had a hundred dresses. Still, she would not like for them to begin on her. She wished Peggy would stop teasing Vanda Petronsky. Oral Comprehension Check In what way was Vanda different from the other children? Number 2. Did Vanda have a hundred dresses? Why do you think she said she did? Number 3. Why is Maddie embarrassed by the questions Peggy asks Vanda? Is she also like Vanda or is she different? Now the story again. Today, even though they had been late to school, Maddie was glad she had not had to make fun of Vanda. She worked her arithmetic problems absent-mindedly. Eight times eight? Let's see. She wished she had the nerve to write Peggy a note because she knew she never would have the courage to speak right out to Peggy, to say, Hey, Peg, let's stop asking Vanda how many dresses she has. When she finished her arithmetic, she did start a note to Peggy. Suddenly, she paused and shuddered. She pictured herself in the schoolyard, a new target for Peggy and the girls. Peggy might ask her, where she got the dress that she had on and Maddie would have to say it was one of Peggy's old ones that Maddie's mother had tried to disguise with. Page number 68 If only Peggy would decide of her own accord to stop having fun with Vanda. Oh well, Maddie ran her hand through her short blonde hair as though to push the uncomfortable thoughts away. What difference did it make? Slowly, Maddie tore into bits the note she had started. She was Peggy's best friend, and Peggy was the best-liked girl in the whole room. Peggy could not possibly do anything that was really wrong, she thought. As for Vanda, she was just some girl who lived up on Boggins Heights and stood alone in the schoolyard. She scarcely ever said anything to anybody. The only time she talked was in the schoolyard about her hundred dresses. Maddie remembered her telling about one of her dresses, pale blue, with coloured trimmings. And she remembered another that was brilliant jungle green and a red sash. You'd look like a Christmas tree in that, the girls had said in pretended admiration. Thinking about Vanda and her hundred dresses all lined up in the closet, Maddie began to wonder who was going to win the drawing and colouring contest. For girls, this contest consisted of designing dresses and for boys, of designing motorboats. Probably Peggy would win the girls' medal. Peggy drew better than anyone else in the room. At least, that's what everybody thought. She could copy a picture in a magazine or some film star's head so that you could almost tell who it was. Oh, Maddie was sure Peggy would win, 
Well, tomorrow the teacher was going to announce the winners. Then they would know. The next day it was drizzling. Maddie and Peggy hurried to school under Peggy's umbrella. Naturally, on a day like this, they didn't wait for Vanda Petronsky on the corner of Oliver Street, the street that far, far away, under the railroad tracks and up the hill, led to Boggins Heights. Anyway, they weren't taking chances on being late today because today was important. Page number 69 Do you think Miss Mason will announce the winner today? asked Peggy. Oh, I hope so. The minute we get in, said Maddie, of course, you'll win, Peg. Hope so, said Peggy eagerly. The minute they entered the classroom, they stopped short and gasped. There were drawings all over the room, on every ledge and window sill, dazzling colours and brilliant, lavish designs, all drawn on great sheets of wrapping paper. There must have been a hundred of them all lined up. These must be the drawings for the contest. They were. They were. Everybody stopped and whistled or murmured admiringly. As soon as the class had assembled, Miss Mason announced the winners. Jack Beggles had won for the boys, she said, and his design for an outboard motor was an exhibition in room 12, along with the sketches by all the other boys. As for the girls, she said, although just one or two sketches were submitted by most, one girl, and room 13 should be proud of her, this one girl actually drew 100 designs, all different and all beautiful. In the opinion of the judges, any one of the drawings is worthy of winning the prize. I am very happy to say that Vanda Petronsky is the winner of the girl's medal. Page number 70 Now the lesson continues. Unfortunately, Vanda has been absent from school for some days and is not here to receive the applause that is due to her. Let us hope she will be back tomorrow. Now, class, you may file around the room quietly and look at her exquisite drawings. The children burst into applause and even the boys were glad to have a chance to stamp on the floor put their fingers in the mouths and whistle, though they were not interested in dresses. Look, Peg, whispered Maddie. There is that blue one she told us about. Isn't it beautiful? Yes, said Peggy. And here is that green one. Boy, and I thought I could draw. Oral Comprehension Check Why didn't Maddie ask Peggy to stop teasing Vanda. What was she afraid of? Number two, who did Maddie think would win the drawing contest and why? Number three, who won the drawing contest? What had the winner drawn? Thinking about the text. Number one, how is Vanda seen as different by the other girls? How do they treat her? Number two, how does Vanda feel about the dresses game? Why does she say that she has a hundred dresses? Number three, why does Maddie stand by and not do anything? How is she different from Peggy? Was Peggy's friendship important to Maddie? Why? Which lines in the text tell you this? Number four. What does Miss Mason think of Vanda's drawings? What do the children think of them? How do you know? Page number 71 Thinking about language Number 1 Look at these sentences. A. She sat in the corner of the room where the rough boys who did not make good marks sat. The corner of the room 
where there was most scuffling of feet. B. The time when they thought about Vanda was outside the school hours. These two sentences have some italicized clauses. And these italicized clauses help us to identify a set of boys, a place and a time. They are answers to the questions, what kind of rough boys? Which corner did she sit in? And what particular time outside of school hours? They are defining or restrictive relative clauses. Compare them with the non-defining relative clauses discussed in Unit 1. Now, the italicized phrases in both the sentences are in the sentence at A who did not make good marks and the next one is there was most scuffling of feet and in the sentence B the italicized phrase is when they thought about Vanda. Combine the following to make sentences like those given earlier. Number one. This is the bus. What kind of bus? It goes to Agra. Use which or that to combine these two sentences. Like the answer would be to the first question. This is the bus which goes to Agra. Likewise, you have to join the two sentences given at number two. Number two, I would like to buy a shirt. Which shirt? The shirt is in the shop window. Use which or that. Number three, you must break your fast at a particular time. When? You see the moon in the sky. Use when. Number four. Find a word. What kind of word? It begins with the letter Z. Use which or that. Number five. Now find a person. What kind of person? His or her name begins with the letter Z. Use whose to join these two sentences. Number six. Then go to a place. What place? There are no people whose name begins with Z in that place. Use where. Part 2. The narrative voice. This story is in the third person. That is, the narrator is not a participant in the story. But the narrator often seems to tell the story from the point of view of one of the characters in the story. For example, look at the italicized words in this sentence. Thank goodness she did not live up on Boggins Heights or have a funny name. Thank goodness are italicized. Whose thoughts do the words thank goodness express? Maddie's, who is grateful that although she is poor, she is yet not as poor as Vanda or as different. So she does not get teased. She is thankful about that. Number one. Here are two other sentences from the story. Can you say whose point of view the italicized words express? Number one. Here are two other sentences from the story. Can you say whose point of view the italicized words express? Number one. But on Wednesday, Peggy and Maddie, who sat down front with other children who got good marks and who didn't track in a whole lot of mud, did notice that Vanda wasn't there. The italicized words are with other children who got good marks and who didn't track in a whole lot of mud. Number two, Vanda Petronsky, most of the children in room 13 didn't have names like that. They had names easy to say like Thomas, Smith or Ellen. The italicized words are 
the children in room 13 didn't have names. Page number 72. Number 2. Can you find other such sentences in the story? You can do this after you read the second part of the story as well. Third part. Look at this sentence. The italicized adverb expresses an opinion or point of view. Obviously, the only dress Vanda had was the blue one she wore every day. This was obvious to the speaker. And the italicized word is obviously. Other such adverbs are apparently, evidently, surprisingly, possibly, hopefully, incredibly, and luckily. Use these words appropriately in the blanks in the sentences given hereafter. You may use a word more than once and more than one word may be appropriate for a given blank. Number one. Blank. He finished his work on time. Number two. Blank. It will not rain on the day of the match. Number three. Blank. He had been stealing money from his employer. Number four. Television is blank to blame for the increase in violence in society. Number five. The children will blank learn from their mistakes. Number six. I can't blank lend you that much money. Number seven. The thief had blank been watching the house for many days. Number eight. The thief blank escaped by bribing the jailer. Number nine. Blank. No one had suggested this before. Number 10. The water was blank hot. Now the glossary. Page number 64. Scuffling of feet. It stands for noisy dragging movements of the feet on the ground. Page number 65. Didn't hang right means didn't fit properly. Hopscotch. This is a game in which children hop into and over squares marked on the ground. Nudge. A gentle push. Page number 66. Incredulously means showing unwillingness to believe. Stolidly means not showing any feeling. Bullies means those who use their strength or power to frighten weaker people. Page number 67. Hand-me-down clothes means old clothes handed down by someone else. Mocking here means false, meant to make fun of. Embarrassed means ashamed. Target here it means a person deliberately chosen for attack. Page number 68. Pretended means not real. Drizzling means a very light rain was falling. Page number 69. Lavish means very grand. Page number 70. Exquisite means extremely beautiful and well-made. Burst into applause means suddenly and spontaneously clapped hands. Page 